and welcome again to our webinar regarding this best practices. Um, welcome you all and um, yeah, starting with the agenda, you can see my screen, yeah, that should be the case. Um, so we start with um, a short presentation of Rootcamp. Philip Rittershaus will do that in a couple of seconds. Um, then we start with our project Blythe, which is basically is a, yeah, the big picture from this call. So we are organizing different events um, and try to promote um, innovations in the livestock sector. And um, yeah, after that, we see three best practice examples, um, one from Synomis, one from Biotech, and from Vetvice. All three are in our um, third acceleration batch. And after that, you have the opportunity to ask any questions and answers regarding our call for best practice. We will share your everything what you need, like the links for the template and um, some background information. And um, yeah, so let's start. Um, Philip, come to the stage and stage is yours. Hey, everyone. Yeah, um, also hello from my side. <clears throat> I'm Philip. I had the chance to uh, actually start the start the root camp and I'd like to give you a little introduction on what we're actually doing and why we are um, starting a project uh, like livestock uh, project live and uh, with that I'd like to give you a little introduction about uh, our partner area um, so the root camp you see on the right side was actually initiated by K plus S a big fertilizer uh, company and now we have more partnerships like KWS, um, the biggest uh, sugar beet producer, seed producer in the world. Um, SKW is the biggest nitrogen uh, fertilizer producer, pr producer uh, in, in Germany. And we are not alone. We also have uh, on the other side, the Spin Lab, that's our uh, second location. And they are focusing more on the digital health, uh, energy and smart infrastructure area. Um, how, wh why do I present that? I just want to show that um, our opinion is that we can't do as much alone. So we are trying to be an open um, platform and try to include as many um, participants, as many stakeholders as possible. And on the um, bottom side, you can also see um, Eurotier that will be important for the BLAB project as this is the normal way we want to finish it. So in the end of the year, in the mid of November, the Eurotier will take place in hand of us. So that is also important for the BLAB project. And last but not least, the BLAB project was, um, was funded by the Smart AgriHub initiative. So, but what is RootCamp actually doing? What are we focusing on? Um, we try to focus on the upstream side of the agri-food value chain. So everything that is participating in the um, production of food and feed ingredients. Uh, we also look at waste streams. Circular economy is a big topic. Bioeconomy is also a big topic. So everything that um, has an impact in uh, actually bringing the world into towards the next generation, reducing emissions and increasing uh, efficiency. And uh, right at the very beginning is obviously start the input. So livestock uh, is one of our uh, core topics that we are looking at right now. Another core topic is uh, something that you, you find on the very right side. Um, so carbon positiveness not only on the material stream side, um, but also on how can we actually um, change methods, cha change things, um, how, how uh, farmers are actually treating the soil to increase the uh, carbon, carbon storage, the carbon sequestration right on the ground. Um, but what are we providing for, for services, for products? We see ourselves in the intersection between corporates and startups, both sides we know quite well. And we offer to our companies, to our um, uh, corporates, we offer a creation that is more on the entrepreneurship side. So ideas coming from the corporates, we try to bring um, to a, a economically viable area to the first prototype. We also offer inspiration. That is what we collect the startups or apply, the startups that apply for our acceleration batch they provide uh, inspiration to our partners and our goal is to actually connect them together to a uh, working cooperation and validation is becoming a more and more uh, important part, validation of existing companies, existing products um, in the in industry environment, but also 
um, trying to find the right solutions of established products, established solutions for certain challenges that come from the industry. Um, how do we do we do it in, in uh, actually on a, on a ground truth area? So we are always looking at the first phase of inspiration of understanding um, of acceleration. So that is true for the inspirational part where we have kickoffs, we have um, inspirational workshops with, with the employees of, the, of our partner companies. Um, we have an uh, acceleration batch uh, right now running as well, covering 12 weeks of different topics. And uh, we also have um, some workshops with the established companies. And always on, this, on the second phase, we try to bring this into reality or we try to test it into reality. For example, after the acceleration batch, we try to bring the startup that participated together with our corporate partners into a working uh, pilot project so that the solution um, that was um, uh, sort of explained to, to, to the corporate side um, are uh, during the acceleration batch is being put into a concept on how the uh, pilot, plan uh, pilot project should actually look like. And then in the second phase, over six to nine months, we are really testing um, the hypothesis. Um, one example is that we um, developed together with Aquapurna, one company from our very first batch, and K plus S, we provided or we developed a new um, salt premix to, to make salt water into uh, seawater for land-based shrimp aquaculture. So that's just as an example. In the end, we always try to provide information and a good information base for the decision makers in the industry. That is an overview of our second batch that was uh, conducted over the winter. So we had seven companies there. A couple of companies were actually chosen by KPS. One company uh, was chosen by us and another company is, was participating as a local hero. And you can see uh, what has happened over the way uh, of our acceleration batch. They got EIC funding, for example, and two of them are now active in a pilot project to bring their um, solution or their technology um, into a working um, the working process in the industrial environment. For example, Contagra is now um, going to Uganda and trying to um, increase the working capital, the available working capital for smallholder farmers. On the other side, Biove company from also from Lower Saxony, they are um, providing or they are producing microbial cellulose, and we try to um, reduce the amount of microplastic that's being then put into agricultural input materials. Uh, and uh, ex, uh, uh, and then use um, bio-based products instead of uh, of the fossil-based ones. And that's an overview of all the companies and the points and the, the verticals uh, that we covered so far with the startups that participated in our acceleration batches in the three. Um, right now, we are a team of uh, eight people. Um, uh, we have coaches like uh, Kaspar, we have uh, freelancers like Ilka, she's uh, actually was the one that uh, wrote the grant for the BLAT project. Uh, we are going more into uh, events and uh, have interns like Mario who will take over in the very second, um, or uh, marketing students like uh, Sandy. And last but not least, we, we always need support. Uh, and uh, so uh, Lila is supporting us on our administrative processes. The, the root camp was initiated, uh, as I said, by myself, but I wouldn't have done uh, the way uh, without Gaia. So Gaia is actually setting up the project and is managing the acceleration program um, like nobody else. So now I'm uh, taking over, uh, giving over to um, Mario again. He will give you a deep dive into BeLife, how we actually or why we actually started this project um, to connect startups with the livestock industry. Yo, thank you very much, Philip. Um, yeah, starting with BeLive. So what we want to do is boosting innovation in the livestock sector. And um, for this, we are creating a very big network and we are doing a lot of different events. So the timeline shows you um, we are already at event two. So the second one about the best practices and then the first event um, where I want to show you another slide, um, which is the next one. This, this was basically done to, to define the challenges in the livestock sector. And today we want to present you the 
solutions for it, basically, at least for a few challenges. Um, and yeah, you can also see the deadline for the call for best practices. This is on the 12th of July. And um, so have this in mind as a startup if you want to prepare your own um, best practice. And on the 30th of August, we will have a very big um, networking event here in Hanover, which is a great re um, region for such an event because the region around Hanover here in Germany is um, pretty known for its livestock sector, basically. So a few impressions of the first event regarding the to define the challenges um, in the livestock sector. So we had a great workshop, a panel discussion with a lot of experts here from, um, from the regions, like 15 people um, were there. And um, yeah, we had different type of um, yeah, categories. So we had different startups, but we also had um, big corporates and associations, which are very important in this um, sector. Going a bit into the details of the challenges, which are basically the result from the first event. Um, yeah, we defined with all the experts together seven um, main challenges. And the one which is basically above everything else is the acceptance of the innovation. So if we do not have um, an accept acceptance for the innovations, we can't implement them. And this is basically above everything else. And then topics, of course, like increased animal welfare, which is especially relevant for developed countries. Um, but uh, reducing environmental impact is probably the most important thing. Um, yeah, because livestock sector has huge emissions, a lot of water and land use, and this needs to be reduced significantly in the future. Um, another thing is data management. So yeah, everything is basically also related to her data management because if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And um, we, yeah, data is the key to basically to improve the processes. Um, yeah, another thing is consumer behavior, probably again, um, more relevant for developed countries where, um, yeah, the, the consumer is asking for more and more animal welfare and for transparency also. And um, during the last months and years, we see that supply chain really are Reliability is important, but obviously too. So we need to have like more regional value change, um, which which are not so, or which are more strong, basically. To to um, yeah yeah <laughs> um, okay. And so this those are basically the challenges. And now we created a small survey for you, um, which is Gaia going to push into the webinar so you can define by yourself what is your biggest challenge from your perspective so again those um, points which we discussed already um yeah on the slide before and which were defined on the um on the first live event so different topics which are all interlinked to each other so you cannot um, look at one specific topic because it's definitely dependent on another topic. And um, yeah, I'm uh, very curious about the results. So I give you a few seconds to, uh, to answer the question. And hopefully we can um, afterwards, we can see also the results that would be very nice, but I'm sure that will happen. I will give you 10 more seconds, Mario. Yeah. 70% of the participants answered, so I will just leave a couple of more seconds, then I, we will show the results. Yeah. Now everyone should be able to see the results, which is uh, quite interesting that even two of those um, challenges are not voted at all by the participants, um, but we can see two main things, um, reducing the environmental impact and the innovation acceptance. Um, yeah, seems to be the most important for the audience here. And also very strong is the consumer behavior and increased animal welfare, whereas the data management, um, yeah, is not seen as a very, very big challenge. 
only three of 21 water courses. Um, yeah, thank you very much for this small interactive session. Um, yeah, it already disappeared, perfect. <laughs> um, so we go to the next slide and now, yeah. So now we are coming basically to our call for best practices. Um, so why do we do actually this call for best practices? Because we see the livestock sector shows high emissions and inefficiencies and we really need to change there something. And there's at the same time, huge potential for increased efficiencies, but for this, we really need to have innovations. And existing innovations right now have a lack of visibility. And therefore we need to facilitate applications of innovations. And what is actually a best practice? It's an innovative solution solving an ex existing problem is proven to show impact in the industrial environment. So not in the laboratory, but in the industrial environment. It has measurable results, is economically viable, and it can be adapted easily by other customers. This is basically what we are looking for and how can you apply by filling out the template, which is Gaia um, going to send in the, in the chat, but we will also share it later in the, via email to all of you. Um, there you can use maximum two to, to three pages, so it's not that much work, and you are completely free to use any visualizations or bullet points or whatever. Um, yeah, and you basically um, submit it via a Google form, and the deadline, as said before, is the 12th of July. And after our startups presented their, um, yeah, their best practices, we have a question and answer. So you can have uh, can ask us questions. We we will answer to you. Um, why should you actually apply with your best practice? So the incentives um, we will give you a great visibility. So presentation in front of the industry, awareness rising. We will cover you in uh, social media and blog posts. So we have a huge um, yeah outreach here with Rootcamp. Um, we will give you the knowledge, the access to our entrepreneurial education platform, where we cover topics like venture capital, marketing, sales, and so on. Everything that is important to, to run your startup successfully. And um, we provide you with a very big network. So selected startups can pitch their best practices during the big networking event on the 30th of August here in Hanover. And um, yeah. At the end or during this um, big event, we will have the voting by the audience and the best startups selected by the audience will also get the coaching by um, our managing director, Philip Rittershaus, and can also participate at the Eurotium, which is the biggest um, yeah, animal or livestock related um, exhibition on the world. So a very huge event, which is a great opportunity also here in Hanover. And now I am switching over to um, the best practices, and we will see three of them. One is uh, provided by Synomis regarding air quality monitor monitoring. Um, one is from Biotech, microbiomes and animal feed, and Vetvice is the last but not least um, visual animal monitoring. And again, before I hand over to Synomis, um, this is our call for best practices. The deadline is 12th of July. Apply now. We will share all relevant links with you. Um, if you have any questions, ask us um, after the best practice examples. Okay, hand over to you, Enrico. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, you all, for being here. Now I share my screen for. Okay. Okay, do you see my screen? Um, not yet. But maybe it takes a few seconds. Let's try again. Now it's coming up. Okay. okay, perfect. 
hand over to you. Okay. I would like to introduce you to Nomis and uh, explain what, what uh, we are doing. Uh, we patent a solution for monitoring with uh, precision, and, and this is the key with precision, the environment in, uh, inside the stable, around the clock and uh, over the year. And uh, regarding environment, uh, we speaking about, for example, ammonia, methane, CO2, and the other gases then uh, affecting, for example, the animal welfare. This is an overview of uh, what uh, we are, how uh, our system works. There are different modules that collect the data uh, from the farm for the farmer. So we collect all the data from the air that is our core business, but also from the water and from the energy system, collect all the data and put it on the cloud platform so the farmer can uh, improve and manage better the, the farm. And in the other side, we have uh, uh, Fumagalli Salumi, that is our best practice. Fumagalli Salumi is an Italian company uh, focused on the finest uh, cured meat, Italian cured meat. It's a traditional kind of cured meat and they uh, work a lot with, with uh, abroad Italy. They export this kind of uh, cured meat uh, all over the world. And uh, yes, have a customer around the world is great, is uh, fantastic, but there is also some problem because they need to show to their customer the respect of the animal welfare. And also they need to uh, monitoring all the farmer, they farm from one platform. So uh, our solution is give to Fumagalli a system for monitoring the animals uh, with a camera, but also to collect, and again, with precision, the environmental parameters all in a, in a cloud pl platform for uh, easily having an easily access to this data and also share this data with their customer. But uh, the, the impact of this project is more than that because uh, now Fumagalli are able with uh, our data to op optimize the ventilation in barns, those correctly, the additive in the slurry tank, for example, and also with this data, now are able to reduce the use of antibiotic inside the, 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 the farms. This is uh, one example of the use of antibiotic. Uh, they now are able to decrease the use of antibiotics by 60% with the data, with the precise data, you are able, they are able now to change, the, for example, the ventilation or the additive in, in the feed, and they, and consequently, they are now able to, to decrease the use of antibiotics. As a uh, whole project, there was also some constraints, in particular uh, technical, because uh, the, um, the farms are located in a uh, in rural zone with, uh, for example, poor GSM 4G coverage. And because the, um, the staff of uh, the farm are also so busy, and uh, uh, also there was uh, some uh, operation uh, operational uh, constraint because uh, sometimes the, the premises uh, was not able to be cleared by the animals. So, uh, so uh, as you can imagine, is not uh, easy uh, or simple works with a pigs that try to bite your legs. And uh, this is the lesson that uh, we learn. We learn that it is crucial have uh, a project manager defined before a project manager because the, the farm owner, the farmers are always busy. So for maintaining the services uh, crucial as a project manager and also the, the role of the veterinarian because uh, the, the farmers trust their veterinarian. So it's uh, very, very crucial uh, speak and talk with, with, with the veterinarian. 
and also that all place is good for drink and uh, Italian espresso. Uh, okay, now mm, we are working already with uh, Fumagalli. We uh, now are um, working for, for extend the monitoring to all the farm of, of the group. This is only one of uh, our uh, best practices. We have different customer, different partner in different countries. So if you are uh, interested to other best practices, please uh, contact us. Thank you very much. That was a very nice presentation. Um, Thank you. If anyone has questions, um, as you mentioned before, you can reach out to Enrico. And um, with those words, I would take over to Maurizio from BI Tech. And I'm uh, looking forward to your presentation. Thank you, Mario. Uh, give me one second, please. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Perfect. We can see your screen. Perfect. Just right. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much for everything for joining to this webinar. Um, today I'm going to show an example of our best practice where we are implementing in South America. Uh, but at the beginning, I want to introduce a little bit about BLTEC. In BLTEC, we ask ourselves how we can produce sustainable animal protein to fulfill the growing demand with less use of natural resources, less waste, affordable and healthier. And this is a, a huge question. We are already thinking about it. And this is the reason why we create a, a solution for this one. This solution is to reconfiguring the intestinal microbiome. How we do that is through the complex feed additives that we call precision microencapsulate microbiomes. So I'm going to explain a little bit more uh, about our best practice example. This is just one of the different trials that we perform usually in different farms. Uh, in this case, we evaluated uh, 5,104 piglets uh, during 50 days. Uh, this is the waning stage. And this is a very stressful period for the piglets because in, in South America and in other countries is so normal that they, that they use a lot of antibiotics uh, to prevent uh, infection uh, and avoid the increase the mortality in the farm. So it's a very stressful period of the life of the piglets. And what we want to do here is to define a better way to produce or to grow, to raise these piglets. So we define a uh, experiment when we're going to replace antibiotics growth promoters um, we we're going to replace with feed additives mainly composed by probiotics and good bacteria that we call uh, microbiomes and we define four KPIs uh, who help us to make a measure of the impact and the welfare and the sustainability of this uh, production. So the problems we address, uh, the first one is the profitability problem. is one of the most important because yeah, every farmer uh, wants to produce more efficient meat uh, and more greener and cleaner meat, but the yeah, profitability is a very important uh, sustainability concept. Uh, the second problem we address here is the feed pressure problem. Uh, we know that the use of the lambs and the grains to nourish the animals is a big problem and we need to be more 
efficient in order to reduce the use of natural resources. Uh, the third problem we address is the main problem. Um, the mission uh, estimate by any animal, if we can reduce them uh, by the improving the absorption of nutrient for the piglets, so we can uh, reduce the emission, as I mentioned. And the health problem is one of the biggest one because antimicrobial resistance is growing everywhere, uh, mainly in South America and Europe is reducing because you already have some laws about the um, ban to use antibiotics as growth promoters. But yeah, it's important and we have a big hurdle here because everybody think or is common to, to think that if you stop to using antibiotics growth promoters, your profitability and your efficiency in, in the production could goes down. Uh, but I'm going to show you that is not what we are found with our solution. So what we do, we replace antibiotics growth promoters uh, in the diet. We replace with complex feed additives that we call precision microencapsulated microbiomes. It's important uh, to use the term microencapsulated because we have a patent of this one. And this guarantees that our microbiomes, our good bacteria is going to release in a specific part of the intestine of the piglets. And once this happens, they can remodel or reconfiguring the microbiome of the piglets into a more efficient and healthier one. Uh, so let's go to the results. We have two different groups, a control group and a treatment group. And we have the four KPAs that I mentioned before. The first one, profitability. So we can see here that we could uh, improve the gross profit uh, up to 2%, and we could improve the feed conversion ratio uh, even in 5% with a statistical difference. Uh, so yeah, in, in this stage of the animal that I mentioned before, we could improve the feed conversion ratio from 1.6 uh, to reduce into 1.53. Uh, uh, even the gross margin for this uh, entire trial, we could uh, improve the gross profit uh, up to 85,000 euros uh, in comparison with the, with the other group that was uh, 83,000 uh, US uh, euros. Um, in, the, in the other KPAs that we call less feed intake, we could reduce the amount of feed that the animals are eating or were eating. So we could reduce even about two kilograms of feed per animal in this trial. But if we can see the other graphic, we can see that all the animal uh, gain the same weight. So that means that we are absorbing more nutrients and the piglets are growing at the same rate, but with less intake, with less feed. And this is a very good um, number because we can produce cheaper and more efficient. Then if we have less intake for animals with the same diets, isoproteic, isoenergetic diets, and the only difference between diets was the antibiotics, growth promoters, and the microbiomes or the good bacteria we, we provide, so, so we can calculate how many manure the animal can produce. Uh, because yeah, for us, the intestine are like a bioreactor. So we have the incomes, the inputs, and we have the outside, and we can calculate uh, how this, uh, for, bal for mass balance, how is the output in this process. And we are finding that uh, our, piglets can uh, produce less than one kilogram of manure, even close to two kilograms. 
uh, less manure uh, com compared with the control group. Uh, in case of health, we have uh, a reduction, a very important reduction in mortality. Uh, in the control group, we have 285 dead piglets. And instead, in our control group, we have 2,228 uh, piglets. And the most important thing here is that we are having these, got, these good numbers without antibiotic growth promoters. So the treatment group, uh, it was the, 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 the measure and we have 100% of antibiotic growth promoter, but in the other hand, we have two, just 2% 2 of antibiotics. So we are reducing 98% of the antibiotics in this trial and we are getting better results. Even I have a, a comment here, a, a comment here, because in the first KPA, the gross profit is switched. So it's it, to the other side, the, the, the treatment is the blue bar and the, and the control group is the, is the green one. But it's just in the first graphic, I just noticed that is switched. So, yeah, is uh, what we can see here in these trials is that we can impact in a better way these KPAs and, and get better results in commercial farms. Um, some constraints that we define here, uh, yeah, we need to perform comparative tests in our farms because yeah, the variables can change over the time. So every farm has a micro uh, word there, and we need to perform these kind of trials in order to maximize and to yeah to show that our treatments and replace antibiotics growth promoters is going in the good direction as in and is improving the profitability of the farmer and and the quality of the meat. Lesson learned. Um, we can say that, yeah, the piglets have this potential to increase the absorption of nutrients, what we see in the data, and reduce the emission. Uh, if we can control this microbiome, if we can control the intestine of the animals, uh, we can even keep improving that number that I showed you before. So yeah, it's very common that the farmers uh, be afraid about to replace antibiotics because is a uh, is normal that they think that everything is going going round going wrong or going down with the numbers, but is something that we that we are overcoming that we are proving that is in, even in the opposite direction we are improving the numbers uh, under a uh, very uh, different sanitary conditions. So that is important to show that if we can control in a good way, the intestine of the piglets, we can even keep improving and, and busting the genetic of the animals in order to increase the absorption, reduce the feed intake, reduce the manure production and improve the profitability. And at the end, reduce the mortality that we saw. So yeah, this is part of our allies that we already have. We already have um, an office in, in the Netherlands and we are uh, also in Colombia. So yeah, that are the main center we are operating for South America and for Europe. Um, this is part of our allies and any contact information, you can see our correspondency addresses. So thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank you very much, Mauricio. Um, there's one question in the chat and I would ask you for a short answer because we are running out of time. But um, yeah, one person asked um, whether you are already active in the islands in the Caribbean region and if the system is um, also working in cows or goats or sheep or for other animals? Yeah, not in the car, not in an island, 
but we are, yeah, we have some clients close to the Caribbean Sea, but not in an island uh, where the yeah, temperature is different. Um, and we are mainly focused right now in pigs and, and beef also production, but not still in goat. And we already have a good numbers. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. And now I would um, hand over to Vetweiss. Um, I see there's still one question in the chat. Maurizio, maybe you can answer it via, um, via the chat. I think you should okay. be able to write there. Um, okay, so we are, yeah, that's perfect. And I see Johannes is already sharing the slides. Perfect, hand over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot. So, um, uh, does it kind of work? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so, um, I'm Johannes von Wettweiss. Uh, we are a company uh, founded in Hanover uh, in 2020. And uh, we use the animal as a sensor via our camera system and give the farmer all the information uh, it needs to optimize uh, the barn and the barn management. And we are a small team, or started as a small team with uh, three founders. Um, now we've grown uh, to 15 people and have our operations mainly in Germany, but also um, around in the Netherlands and are currently looking for other barns outside of Germany um, in the EU. So, uh, what is our solution? Um, we developed um, a AI that uses videos from a camera system um, in the barn to analyze the behavior of the animals and the distribution of the animals. Um, all of the computing power is in a small server or computer in the barn. So we use edge computing and just need a cloud connection to give the farmer access to its data. So uh, if he wants to look um, on a barn when he's um, on, its, on the field or in holidays, uh, he can do this and then he needs this cloud connection. And for us to um, help with our services at this point in time, um, our goal is to automatize this um, entirely. But um, yeah, at the moment, we also need this to look at the data and give him um, help in what he should do. This is relatively easy. We use standard surveillance cameras, um, install them on the ceiling of the barn um, for pigs and poultry. Uh, poultry, just fattening poultry pigs, all production stages. Um, they are wired to a server which analyzes um, the data um, and gives the feedback um, via a, um, a cloud portal to, to the farmer and to us or to other remote experts like the veterinarians. Um, feed specialists and yeah, all the people you want to give the information to basically. So sometimes the slaughterhouses are um, interested, sometimes um, people who uh, want to optimize the um, feeding or drinking systems or the ventilation systems. Uh, we are DSG uh, or GDPR compliant. Um, of course, everything is processed in Europe and uh, the, the whole system, the hardware of the whole system is cheap, needs no maintenance, and uh, doesn't really add in the barn, add up in the barn. So you don't really see a uh, big hardware impact when we were there. We installed it in uh, um, a chicken barn in two days or one and a half day for 40,000 chicken and um, pigs depends on the size of the barn, but um, it's about uh, one or two days, uh, if you want to have um, your thousand or five hundred uh, pigs under surveillance, depends a bit on how the barn is built, of course. Um, for this uh, talk, we have a case study um, in a farm for fattening pigs. It's a farm with about uh, five thousand um, fattening places in small and medium uh, large groups. And uh, the farm is in the Netherlands. They are in some other, uh, very open and in some other projects as well. So uh, they were enthusiastic to welcome us there uh, to get more information. 
um, about the system and we are in the end stage of fattening so the pigs got in there with about 20 to 30 kilos it depends a bit on how the farmer is what he wishes for um, in, in this uh, fattening period and they leave with between uh, 100 and 125 kilos uh, we had a special problem in this barn that um, or a lot of small things that we've seen but one special problem um, that we want to showcase here that is really important because it happens a lot but it's mostly undiscovered by the farmer um, we see um, a high recurrent fluctuation of um, activity and stress in one specific pen and in this case it was the last pen in the row so with just opening the barn door like it's normally done um, if you go through your barn looking over the animals and thinking it's kind of fine um, they look great you would never see this problem and we are pretty sure that um, he has this problem in a lot of other pens too where our camera system isn't installed but he just doesn't realize it because you don't see it uh, if you just see it if um, it's feeding time and feeding time it's just for some minutes so you can't humanly be everywhere at, at feeding time at once um, what we normally see doing feeding time this is a uh, um, medium-sized pen um, these were two small pens where just they just opened them up and uh, we have one feeder um, here and now the animals hear the sound of the feeding and they some get interested some lay around all get a bit more active but it's just well we get something to eat some animals are there and just start eating other animals are waiting um, till the um, biggest or str strongest animals finished eating and then they know there is enough to eat so they can go after them what we see here is um, the problem you can already see the animals lay more directly along the feeder um, they don't want to lay here in the, in the background and uh, they hear the, the start of the feeding system and everyone's getting up at once and then they start pressing around um, the feeder and start rushing towards it start biting each other in the tails and in the flanks um, they are really unhappy and the problem for this was uh yeah it was relatively easy it, it was a defective sensor in the feeding system um you we, we don't have it on camera so you can't really see it but um it looks like here and you have the sensor for how much feed is in the system right up here above um the the feeder and um this sensor was broken and just let through uh, uh, just let a small amount of feed through and then closed the valve and uh, the animals didn't get enough to eat in this pen uh, which means the first animals were there had something to eat and the rest uh, just got hungry um, which makes a big problem if you have an animal that needs uh, its feed to to grow and uh, to make you money so the solution was for us relatively um, easy the thing we do is monitoring um, stress um, in all pens so it's relatively easy to detect an abnormal pattern in one pen um, we don't our system doesn't use the real images um, we use the data extracted from the image i just showed it to to showcase how um, it really looks in the barn so we extra uh, um, extract um, the activity and the stress from these animals we've seen um, um, abnormal stress niveau in this one pen so we called the farmer and said hey um, in this pen you have a problem around the feeding time and we are pretty sure that the animals don't get enough to eat because we've seen high activity around feeding time but also lesser animals lying all over the day more fights all over the day um, so the animals were stressed out and if stress and feeding um, is, is at the highest point around the feeding time you can be pretty sure that these animals are hungry so the easiest way to say it was to call the farmer and say look at um, this special feeder 
everything works, but in this feeder, something is wrong. They don't get enough to eat. So he uh, saw the defective sensor, changed it, um, and everything was fine again. Um, the, method, uh, the, the way how we analyze or, or get the information is relatively um, easily explained. Um, this is how our system sees animals. So we detect um, the unspecific animal, give them a number and detect the posture. So if it's standing, sitting or lying. Um, out of these boxes, our system makes the following things uh, that we used in this uh, special case. We look for activity and stress and we look for the area utilization. So where were the animals lying all over the day? Um, activity and stress is data that we derive from um, yeah, detecting the pics in the different pictures of the video and just looking on how much they move uh, between the pictures. And then we can say they are that active and they have this stress level because um, we differentiate between activity at, at a pen level and stress um, is a derivative from activity. So if they are really fast, if they're running really fast, um, this is uh, called stress. And if they are just moving, this is activity. So we have certain thresholds that we've, um, yeah, get to know over time to analyze between or to differentiate between these two. And area utilization is just um, red, a lot of animals, blue, um, nearly no animals in this area over a certain period of time, mostly, um, or in this case, about six hours. Um, so we could see that the animals lying in different places. Um, here on the uh, on the uh, right, this is the activity graph um, of this special pen, and we've seen blue is the, the normal line of activity of this farm. Um, this is the day before the repair, the day after the repair, and you see that they are nearly fifty percent off, um, which is quite high and it, it was going on for two to three days before the farmer changed it um, because he needed some time um, to, to do this. And this leads to a lot of problems in these animals. Um, so what changed after we called the farmer? Um, the pigs were lying around more um, in a normal, in a normal uh, amount of time. Um, they, stopped fighting over feet, which is really, really important because these fights uh, can turn to tail biting. Um, they showed more social behavior, lesser antisocial behavior, so lesser hectic behavior, which means they were um, not so stressed out and they feel better. Um, they, the wounds we've saw, or the farmer saw uh, on these pigs healed. So normally there shouldn't be any problems at the slaughterhouse. Um, they had a much better life after that because uh, having or, uh, being hungry all the day uh, is, is not great. Um, and we had a weight gain after that again. Um, till this moment, we think that the weight gain stopped um, because they didn't get anything or enough to eat. Um, but we couldn't get the data from the farmer. He didn't weight the animals. Um, that was kind of a pity. Uh, we had also some constraints that we've learned in, in this special case. Uh, the farmer was in the Netherlands, he didn't speak English at all. And uh, we had a person who could translate, but this wasn't someone in our company, uh, but was a partner. So um, there was a big language barrier to say what he should do. Um, he was also too busy um, sometimes to change things. Um, so the impact from the things we saw um, was sometimes later than it should have been. Um, he lost kilos just because he needed two to three days to change things. Um, this is kind of um, annoying. Uh, we need internet connectivity in this barn. This wasn't a problem at all. He had a fiber connection, so everything was nice. Um, and one thing that was also very sad is that he told us that he would differentiate between the, the pigs we um, helped to grow and the pigs where our system wasn't involved. Uh, but he could do it in the end. So we don't have data, ex um, data available for our group of pigs and a control group of pigs. Um, this will happen in the future. 
um, but this didn't happen um, that time, which is, yeah, um, bad for us because you know, we can't really show uh, how much difference we make in, in this certain case. Um, we have this for poultry and we have this in other cases for pigs, but in this case, we don't have it. Um, so what were our lessons learned? Um, we need bilingual stuff uh, if we are in uh, yeah, countries outside of Germany uh, to get our information through reliably. Um, we also make sure, need to make sure um, that we get a differentiation between the slaughter date um, of our project pigs and other pigs, um, because for the slaughterhouse, they don't differentiate between pigs in one round. So, but between two days, there's no problem in differentiate between this round is our pigs and the other round is the normal pigs of the barn. Um, and the most important thing for the farmer, and this is something, um, yeah, we hope to see everywhere and we see in most of cases, um, taking, taking care of small changes is more important than everything else. It's, we've, for this special case, we showed something big, but normally it's just the small changes, consistently small changes, adaptations um, that makes the biggest impact on, on your animals. Um, yeah, this is our showcase. So we are doing pigs and poultry. I just uh, want to say at the moment we have, um, you can buy our poultry product, but um, you can be our beta tester in our pig product. And um, yeah, we're kind of on a growth trip at the moment. Um, we are, have installed nearly uh, a thousand cameras till now, and we will double this uh, till end of this year. And we will double this again, I think, in the next um, two to three, and, yeah, and Q, Q3 or Q4 the year after that. Um, and signed project pipeline signed is about um, yeah, 1.6 million at this moment. Many thanks, Johannes. So we are a bit over time. So um, many thanks for that. So we are not really able to go into a deep Q&A session with the teams. So whenever you have any questions, please put them now in the chat um, or please write directly to, to Gaia or to us or to the, um, to the founders. We are very happy to um, establish um, the connection. Um, I'd like to thank you all for, for participating and uh, need to now uh, go into the um, final words. Um, so as I said, um, this, this project is being funded by, uh, by the uh, EU grant. So it comes from Smart AgriHubs and we are partnering uh, with the German Agri-Food Society in this one. And uh, after this project, so that stopped uh, in September, uh, we still want to elongate it and to be present in the um, at the Euro tier, which takes place in the November, mid of November here at Hanover. So we try to do everything for livestock startups um, to gain presence. And that is the whole point of, uh, of this project to um, get connection between the livestock startups, but also to show the innovation, show the best practices, show the solutions for the existing um, uh, challenges and uh, that then get connection to the to the actually the farmers and uh, also for the industry. Um, so whenever you have your best practice on your own, please um, uh, send it to us. If you know somebody that has it has best practice that might even come um, together with the industrial part or with the, with the farmer part, um, please make sure that you apply it till the 12th of July. And uh, whenever you want to get uh, connected to stay connected to the root camp, subscribe to our newsletter, uh, there will get all our, uh, all our information or our LinkedIn channel that would be um, that is being pushed as well. And you will get um, all information there as well. Um, so I don't see any more uh, questions. Uh, one question was, uh, before, so we are very happy to share all the um, uh, slides as or the uh, video recording, so that you can um, uh, uh, see it again and uh, check on the details. Um, I think that was a, a very good presentation. We like the deep dive. We try to see what really is the impact 
Um, and uh, again, thanks for all the participants. I don't see that there are more any more questions. So um, again, many thanks. That was it from our side. Um, and uh, stay tuned for our other activities. Um, and remember that end of um, August, we want to have a big um, networking event here presenting the best practices that we collect till the 12th of July and have as many startups uh, as possible present their best practices, either virtual or here at present. The event will be present here uh, in Hanover at the root camp. Many thanks to you all and uh, have a good afternoon. Sir.